What's up, whole army? Welcome back to another Blender video. No, we don't do that here. Um, so Blender 3.0 is coming at the beginning of December. Delight put out this lovely post basically explaining the uh, release proposal for the timeline. And it seems that December the 1st is going to be when 3.0 is coming out. Unless they, of course, delay it again, which I wouldn't put it past them, but hopefully they don't. The major features that are going to be coming with Blender 3.0 are Cycles X, which I think people are really excited for because I did a community post and it seems like that one was way out in front of everything else. But then there's also the Asset Browser and also there's the Geometry Nodes Fields Refactor. I would try and explain to you exactly what the new Fields Refactor for Geometry Nodes means, but I'm not that intelligent or I just haven't studied it for long enough. So I'm going to throw out some buzzwords and you can try and fill in the gaps and then maybe you can walk away with like 0.5% of a better understanding. So get ready for this. Data flow, function flow with callbacks, Implicit type conversions, maybe. Less need for attributes. Much more similar to how the shader editor works. More abstract, allowing for greater creativity. And a simpler node tree. But that's subjective because you can have fewer nodes with an attribute system in certain examples, but it really depends. But overall, it's going to be much more nicer from an artistic perspective. So hopefully you filled in some words there and that actually made a little bit of sense. Moving on, Daniel Bystet has very generously made a new baking add-on for Blender. And as we know, baking with Blender has always been a little bit crap. And I think part of that was because it was never really designed for baking from the beginning. I did a video about baking procedural materials down into textures, which is very handy for if you wanted to optimize your scenes. For example, if you're using the modular metals package, sorry for the plug, some of those shader groups are extremely heavy in terms of computation. And it's just maybe kind of ridiculous making an animation with those. So if you can bake those down into regular textures, then you can have a really nice smooth animation and the rendering speed will be a lot faster. But the process to bake these into regular textures has always been a bit weird. If you watch that video, there's some weird stuff like if you don't have the right nodes actively selected, then the result just comes out black. And it's like, why? Why does that have to be a thing? But thankfully, there are some heroes in the community that have been making the process of baking things better, simpler, and just more common sense. And if I can just take your eyes and guide you towards this point over here, you will see that the add-on is completely free. But what Daniel has done is he's made a very nice YouTube video explaining the add-on and how it works and how you can use it. And the demo file for that add-on is also available for you to get. So he's been very, very helpful with providing you with the resources you need to learn more about baking and how to do it with this new tool. And look, the user interface looks very nice as well. So maybe give that a look if you're interested in baking. Speaking about baking and stuff, another add-on that does have some baking functionality but is more for texturing is called Ravage. Version two is available now. I was informed about this add-on quite a while ago, but I never really found a space to share it. But I think it's pretty cool. It allows for layer-based texturing. So if you don't really have the money to invest in other like more dedicated 3D texturing packages and you love Blender and you want to do texturing inside of Blender, there are different options available, but I thought this one looked really cool. They also have some cool videos that will give you a breakdown of how to use it. And I think the interface looks particularly nice on this one as well. So if you're interested in that, then I will leave a link in the description. But Curtis, have there been any more updates in the community? Yes, there have been. Zach Rice Reinhardt from CG Boost has finally updated did their Master 3D Sculpting in Blender course. It originally came out in 2017 and it was POG. I'm sorry, we'll never do that again. But it contained a lot of information and it took you from the fundamentals to building like a really cool creature design. And I remember really, really enjoying that course back in the day. And that was before I started doing YouTube. But now they have updated the course for the more recent versions of Blender. They'll take you from the fundamentals to building this new cute character model, how to kind of layer details on over time. And they even have a section on retopology. Wait, wait, where are you going? No, no, come back, come back. Retopology is fine. I know it's a bit of like an iffy subject and it's probably something that we could do automatically, hopefully in the future, but it's an important part of the process and Zach has a very nice teaching style. So believe me, he will take you through it in a very nice way. There'll also be some tips about presentation and you know how I like glowing kind of bluish purpley things. So I really like the look of this. But what's more than this is that more content will be coming in the future. As you can see here, coming in November slash December 2021, there'll be some free updates. And one of these is this epic creature, which I think is very cool. If you're interested in doing like kind of dinosaur sculpts, that looks very appropriate. And there'll also be a new chapter coming about all of the settings for all of the brushes and stuff in Blender. So if you want an in-depth course on sculpting, then feel free to check this out. And I will leave an affiliate link down below if you want to help support this channel and feed into my corporate greed. So what about a channel recommendation? Well, I would like to recommend CG Bird. They've been making a lot of cool content recently and the channel has been growing at a nice fast pace. One thing that I do like about their content is that they combine their 2D painting skills with their 3D work. And you'll see a mix of things like Substance Painter, Photoshop and Blender. And I really like it when artists kind of combine their skills in new ways and share that with new people. But anyway, putting that aside, check out their content. It's very nice. It's very cool. And there's a good amount here to binge watch as well. OK, so now we're going to talk about things that have been going on in my corner of the community. So I'm going to put my new glasses on because it's going to make me look a bit more smart. 
So first of all, you may or may not know about the Blender Nest channel, which is where a bunch of us Blender creators come together and just chat about things for hours on end. It's not always Blender related and we acknowledge this, but it is a nice place just to listen to us talk about random things, the kind of thing that you can put on in the background while you work, and maybe get a few behind the scenes insights into different areas of work, including YouTube, but also kind of freelance and professional areas of work as well. The two newest episodes are quite interesting because in episode 51, we had Daniel Craft come along. And if you don't know who Daniel Craft is, then well, where have you been? But also he's blown up massively recently, especially after designing Mr. Beast's 50 million play button. He came along and shared his experience on a bunch of things, and we also talked about the similarities in our obsessions with organization. And more than this, some of the things that we have in common when it comes to getting ourselves to be productive. So if you're interested in seeing what those things are, as well as listening into a whole range of other subjects, then feel free to check that out. And also in episode 52, we had James Traley come along, who does some work for NASA. Sadly, after recording this episode, James was actually caught up in a tornado, but thankfully he's okay. But also in the episode, we had Chris Bailey come along, see Bailey Film on YouTube. He's made a lot of really nice content especially for geometry nodes recently but in this episode he shared some of his new experience with working with the film industry so if you want to come along and vibe and listen to us talk about things then feel free um as you can see here on the blender nest page cg matter has also had a bit of fun on this channel this channel has basically become like a weird secret place where we can upload random things sometimes we do art reviews as well sometimes we do community conversations where we have interviews with people on our discord server so yeah like if you is interested then you should like definitely check it out sorry i said we wouldn't do that again but yeah i'll leave a link below so as for my personal work which i'll leave to last because i'm such a gentleman <laughs> You might remember my weird green screen rambling video, I talked about the wiki system I was building, which is basically going to replace documentation for my projects. That's now available. So if you go over to my website and you make your cursor do a lovely little dance up to the wiki button at the top here, if you click on that, you'll see, first of all, a lovely dog gif, because I'm sure that's the first thing that everyone will look at unless you're a cat lover, in which case you might have just closed a website. I'm joking, cats are cute as well. But anyway, on this page, you can scroll down and see that I've got these lovely icons for different types of posts. We have these kind of purple ones for tools. We have these brain ones for like examples and things you can follow along with. Then we have these light bulbs for information. If you go up to the top, there's featured projects and you can click on these and there will be convenience links to help you get around the different posts. So some of this has been moved over from the old documentation, which was hosted on Notion that was under the curtisholt.wiki domain. So say I wanted to learn about the Biogen modifier styles, I can click on this, get some information about it, how they work, what to do, see a directory of the modifier styles, click on destructor, maybe find some tips and tricks for them. So that was all on the old wiki. But now I've added some new pages, such as EasyBPY usage examples, where you can have a look at how the module works in different use cases. But then there's also pages for modular metals and the ambient grunge node. And it's not just an explanation of how the system works. I've also included some of my full process behind the project, things I learned about it, and lessons I will take away to the future. So it's almost like a report of the different projects we can learn more about how they were made and how they're used. So you might find this useful. If you want help with the projects, then maybe take a look at this. It's basically becoming my central knowledge hub, which I will add to over time as I make more projects and as I add more examples for the pre-existing ones. Sorry, that was a lot to say and that was probably the most boring part of the video, but if you're still with me, hey, how you doing? Nice to have you. Thanks for sticking around. I also added another page to the website called News Reports. Basically, believe it or not, you might find this hard to believe, but I am actually a human being. That's up to some debate. I can only focus on a certain number of things at once, so I can't keep track of all of the updates happening in the Blender community. So that's new features, cool projects, new add-ons, stuff like that. If you want to help me keep up to date, so if you think, oh, Curtis should probably make a video about this thing, then feel free to come to this webpage and then enter in some information in this form. Tell me what's been going on. Give me some useful links if there's any related to it and just send it to me. It'll only take a few seconds to do. So if you think there's something important I should share with people, then feel free to let me know. Okay, so one more thing on a more personal note, um, we're finally moving house. It's gonna take a while, assuming that all of the contracts are exchanged okay. We finally found a place which would give me a lot more space. Just for reference, I've been doing all of this work and built up all this business stuff from this 2.5 by 2.5 meter room. And I spoke about this in the weird green screen video, but even then most of this space is occupied by the furniture, my bed, my wardrobe, the bookcases. So I've only really got this small space to do anything from. I've got tons of equipment that I can't use and there's all these physical projects I want to make relating to like 3D printing and electronics and stuff, but I just literally don't have the space to do it. But if everything goes ahead okay, I will finally have access to a 41 square meter studio space which would open up a huge world of possibility. So I'm quite excited about that. And it also opens the opportunity for me to design it and turn that into a project. So if you're interested in seeing how I can design a studio space in Blender and 3D and turn that into a actual physical studio over the coming months, then let me know because I can turn that into a, like a long-term project. I've already started blocking things out. I already have in my mind some kind of psychological aspects of my design, reasons why I want to be in certain places looking in certain directions that I want to have like a digital, a physical and admin space, a negative space for mocap and VR stuff. 
stuff. I've been laying it all out in my head, even things like where plug sockets should be placed and everything is looking positive so far. So assuming that everything goes okay, that place should be ours in the not too distant future. I could finally get out of this cocoon and become the techno butterfly I was always meant to be. Okay, that's a bit weird, but I think it's good. It's time for a change, I think. And it would be appropriate timing as well because we're about to hit the 100K. I think it's a good time to end a chapter and start a new one. So anyway, I hope this video has given you some really interesting things to take a look at. Remember, links are down below if you want to check them out. But also feel free to check out my other videos because there's some really cool stuff in there, if I do say so myself. But anyway, if you've had enough of me for today, then don't worry, I understand. Uh, stop procrastinating, do your work. Come on, what are you doing? Have a nice day and I will see you next time.